Hello and welcome to the first part of this project vlog about the tabletop war game The Battle of Five Armies. The game made by Games Workshop and released in 2005 uses the War Master rule system to enact the infamous epic finale to J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit. So first of all, let's have a look at what's in the box. The game uses 10mm plastic figures uh, which are assembled in stands as opposed to individual miniatures and what you're looking at here is the the good contingency so from left to right we have the dwarves the elves the men and the eagles at the back there and you also have some special characters as well which are on the round bases apart from Bjorn who's on a square base there. So let's look at them a bit more detail. So here's a nice shot of the dwarves there. The miniatures are really surprisingly detailed for such a small scale and you can see all the little intricate uh, details that have gone into these miniatures and the dwarves there are led by uh, Dane here we have some elf spearmen and again you can just see how crazily detailed oh. But if I go in too close, you can't see it. But you can see just how much detail there is in these. All the, the fact that they've bothered to do the chain mail and the eye slits on the helmet, and some of them even uh, uh, have you know reasonably detailed faces, which is just crazy. And as you'd imagine, all these spears pointing upwards mean you keep stabbing yourself. Reminds me of the old goblin spearman. Uh, back from my days in Warhammer uh, and that must be Thranduil leading the elves there and he also has uh, two big units of bowmen and uh, if we move on we can see the men of Lake Town. So we have some spearmen there and some bowmen. And of course they are led by Bard. And if we go right to the back get a good look at the eagles uh, here we have here we have Bilbo and Gandalf Bayon and Thorin and I presume there's probably Feely and Keeley standing next to him. Now to give you an idea of the what how just how small 10 millimeter scale is, I will put Gandalf next to his 28 millimeter counterpart and you can see the difference. So as you can see it's crazy how much detail they've managed to cram into these little miniatures. So yeah, that is the good army. Okay, so here we see the slightly less diverse but no less impressive evil army. So this is made up of wargs, uh, warg riders and a buttload of goblins and a few characters at the front. But let's start by looking at the, the wargs over there. Again, very nice miniatures. I'm going to put them at a slight angle there so we can actually see them from a slightly better angle. 
very nice, they're all identical, but at this sort of scale they don't need to need don't need to really look unique. They can be monopose and still look great as a unit. Uh, these are the goblins riding wags. They're a little bit difficult to pick up on camera actually these. So if I can separate some out so you can see them a little bit better. Is that a little bit better? Yeah, a little bit. So you can actually see their spears and shields there. Look at the faces on the walks. I mean, that's quite impressive, I think. And as we move along, you have a huge, huge amount of these uh, goblins or orcs, which I think the term is basically interchangeable in the Tolkien books. And look at the fantastic graining on the shields, and the different assortment of weapons, the fact that they've bothered to sculpt the eyes on the goblins. I think they look absolutely superb. And just look how menacing that looks as a whole. Huge, huge army. And that's the wonderful thing about this scale, is that you're seeing battles as they're really meant to be seen. It's not a skirmish, this is a, a proper battle. So we have these two rather nifty looking uh, orc walk rider captains or lieutenants, generals, I'm not sure what their title is. And we have Bolg, the leader of the York army. Now this seems to be some sort of goblin shaman or something along those lines. But that is the evil army. As well as the miniatures you get a few little extra bits in the box bag of dice of course, a uh, uh, cardboard ruler and this thing I believe is some sort of uh, arc of fire kind of template. Uh, you also get some nice little bits of scenery. These are supposed to be the ruins of Dale. Uh, they're just nice little uh, ruined buildings. And you also get this cardboard river section is actually really quite nice. Um, and would work quite well as a stream for a 28mm game as well, so that's actually quite useful. Um, as well as these, you also get the gigantic Games Workshop. Uh, Hill. and it really is absolutely giant. It's big for 28mm scale so when you use it for 10mm scale it's even more impressive. But you actually get you know two parts to this and the two parts can interlock together. It's actually just too big to get on camera here but you can either put them uh, side by side like that or you can put them lengthways and they've got these nice little sort of interconnecting slots here so they piece together nicely. And if you have four of them you could make a really nice sort of center piece hill. So I might try and scout out another couple of these if I can. Yeah so that's all very nice. And uh, lastly we have the rule book um, which is quite fat actually. Comes in a pretty hefty 96 pages and it's a fantastically beautiful thing this. You'd think for a, a sort of one-off game like this they would have just done a, a quick little sort of leaflet type thing but actually they've got a beautiful full colour uh, rule book with absolutely everything you could ever need to know or want to know. Um, yeah, this is a rule book worthy of a, a, a full system, really. 
rather than just a, a one-off game. And actually, the rules part do take up a massive chunk of this book, so it's not a game for the faint-hearted. Faint-hearted, I don't think. This is quite a, a serious war game. In fact, actually, that's quite a funny quote. It even says that at the start. It says something to the effect of, "This is a serious game for serious war gamers." So you have been warned. Written by the ever brilliant Rick Priestley, and. You'll notice here, actually, there's plenty of pictures in here of miniatures that aren't included in the box. I say it's a standalone game, but they did release one or two extra units that you can add to this. Uh, one of which is this beautiful Smaug model there, which is really rather lovely. Uh, apart from that, there were some uh, Mirkwood Spiders, um, some Hill Trolls, and... Elven Cavalry um, and a giant. I think there are a few different bits and bobs anyway that you can add to uh, add to the armies to make them a bit more interesting. But yes, this is really quite impressive and at the same time quite daunting um, for a game that's supposed to be played straight out of the box. Uh, I must admit, I totally underestimated this box set. I bought it thinking oh this will be a rainy day project I'll wait for the uh, the movie wait till the movie's just about to come out I'll whip it out paint it all up and it'll be fantastic and now having seen it in the flesh and just seeing how much stuff there is and how detailed it is I think this is a much bigger project than I originally anticipated so I'm gonna have to give this quite a lot of love and attention I think this might be a a longer term project than I originally thought and judging by the depth and um, what's the word the well the heft of the rule book there you go that's a good word the heft of the rule book I think I might have trouble actually getting people to play this with me because it seems like the sort of thing where really you want both people to know the rules quite well so, whether or not I ever actually get to play a game of this, only time will tell. But, this has been part one of the vlog. Next up, I'm going to have to start painting some of these. Uh, let me know who you'd like to see first, because I may actually listen to you, because I actually have no preference whatsoever about which order I paint these in. So, let me know. <laughs>